Hello YouTube, uh, this is Captain Nav. I hope you are all doing well. Today we are in uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, runway uh, 16, uh, almost ready for departure, just uh, waiting for the cabin to be uh, ready. As you can see uh, outside, the weather is uh, lovely, just a few clouds around, good visibility and uh, south uh, easterly uh, breeze. We are almost uh, ready to go, as I said, uh, the aircraft is uh, all set up. We have uh, flaps 5 uh, selected. Uh, we'll have a look at the uh, FMC uh, takeoff uh, page. V1 of uh, 152, rotate 153, V2 156, gross weight of uh, 243 decimal uh, 7. And the uh, before takeoff checklist is uh, complete. Just uh, waiting for the cabin now. However, I think we are in for a surprise. It might be a little event during the takeoff. So I won't say any more, I'll let you have a look and uh, then we'll uh, talk about it later. So waiting for the cabin now, shouldn't be uh, too long. Cabin ready, let's go. So we'll uh, bring the power to 55%. Uh, Wait for the uh, N1 to uh, stabilize, then press the toga buttons, thrust ref, and uh, here we go. So it's a derated takeoff, 67 degrees. The acceleration is uh, relatively slow. 80 knots. The wind is now displayed on the navigation uh, display. Soon approaching V1. V1, rotate. Engine failure. So slow rotation. Up to about 10 degrees. Positive climb. Gear up. I'll now have enunciated. It's a good guidance to follow. Keep the center line and uh, maintain uh, V2. Very uh, shallow climb initially. At uh, 200 feet, we can uh, now engage the autopilot. Autopilot. And at 400 feet, track select. Assess the problem. So we have uh, 0 and 1 on the left engine, some EGT, 0 and 2. So it's uh, engine uh, severe uh, damage left. So auto throttle uh, left, off, confirmed, off. The left uh, thrust lever idle, that's confirmed. We uh, bring it back to uh, idle. It's fairly uh, tricky in a uh, flight simulator to uh, bring it back to idle, but uh, we'll uh, get there. Here we are. Fuel uh, control switch cut off, confirmed, cut off, and engine fire warning switch pull, confirmed, pull. That's the engine server damage uh, left, uh, memory items complete. Approaching uh, MFRA, minimum flap retraction altitude. The autopilot gives us uh, 224 knots, which is the up speed. And then uh, commands a very uh, shallow uh, rate of climb, so that we can uh, accelerate and uh, retract the flaps uh, on schedule. So initially, uh, as you can see, the acceleration is... Uh, uh, fairly slow, but uh, we can uh, make it a little bit quicker if we use uh, Tuga Thrust. Uh, however, we won't uh, do that in uh, this uh, scenario. Good view of uh, Melbourne. And uh, we're still uh, waiting for the speed to go uh, past uh, the Flap 5 uh, uh, bug on the uh, uh, speed uh, display. So we are about halfway between 5 and 1 with a positive trend. We'll go for uh, flaps 1. 
very shallow uh, rate of climb maybe 100 150 feet per minute at times even uh, levels off a little bit then uh, same thing once uh, we are between uh, flap 1 and flaps up uh, speed uh, then we'll uh, retract the flaps to uh, up which will be uh, about uh, about now now we monitor the last uh, bit of uh, flap retraction the flaps are up uh, now uh, having uh, to wait for continuous thrust to be uh, displayed on ICAS here is the auto throttle adds uh, thrust to the right engine and we are climbing at the up speed to uh, MSA 4500 feet so the navigation uh, is uh, all under control uh, we can refine it a little bit now uh, go to our ports which is a point we had uh, decided we would go to in case of a problem uh, it's uh, straight ahead on the extended center line about 20 miles from uh, the runway and then uh, we can uh, take up a hold there so we'll set the hold at uh, ports so uh, enter ports in the hold uh, set up the details 340 slash let's see if it takes it like this no we need to enter also the uh, R for right, so 340 right turns uh, all looks correct and uh, yep, uh, so we can uh, execute and uh, looking at the legs page we have ports, hold at ports, the navigation is correct we can engage LNAV and the navigation is now taken care of so uh, the first uh, two principles have been applied uh, aviate, that's uh, done we are almost uh, leveling off at uh, 4,500 feet, the aircraft under control and uh, navigate, we're now going to uh, ports and uh, holding at ports so uh, everything is uh, good and uh, under control uh, fairly soon I uh, will be entering the hold at uh, ports in the meantime uh, we can uh, uh, talk to uh, ATC and uh, start uh, uh, drawing up uh, some kind of plan to uh, uh, return uh, possibly to uh, Melbourne at this stage uh, we're looking at uh, the non-normal checklist it's not a normal engine failure so it's a uh, severe damage so we'll have to find the uh, engine uh, section here it is and then uh, go to damage and engine severe damage separation left so read the uh, title engine severe damage separation left the condition and uh, all the memory items are complete ticked uh, green I uh, airframe vibration occurred no not really and uh, the APU selector if APU available start then on the APU is available so start then on and uh, transponder mode selector T only T only plan to land at uh, the nearest suitable airport initially Melbourne is a good option and uh, that's the uh, inhibited uh, checklists which is noted then uh, landing uh, using flaps 20 yes or no yes I will go to the init ref uh, approach page and set uh, VRF 20 initially just as a reminder then uh, ground proximity flap override switch override note uh, use flaps 20 and VRF 20 for landing and uh, flaps 5 for go round that's the uh, engine severe damage separation left uh, checklist complete look for further non-normal checklist we've got fuel in balance which is uh, expected as we are burning uh, fuel uh, only uh, on the uh, a good engine uh, side okay so we'll uh, read the ICAS engine shutdown left, fuel and balance, auto throttle left cancel the ICAS and, uh, now do the uh, after takeoff checklist so normal checklist, after takeoff checklist complete so close the display and uh, now at this stage uh, as we are entering uh, the hold that uh, uh, 
reports. We're gonna have a look at uh, our current weight is uh, 242 tons. So the max uh, landing weight is uh, 223 approximately. So obviously we're gonna have to do uh, something uh, about it and uh, bring the uh, aircraft uh, weight uh, back down to a uh, maximum landing weight. So uh, initially uh, we'll uh, go to the normal checklist, fuel in balance and there is a fuel imbalance between the main tank so the objective is to decide if a fuel leak is uh, suspected and balance the fuel so we'll just uh, tick through these uh, two boxes there uh, which is uh, okay and uh, fuel uh, leak is suspected, no so the fuel uh, cross feed uh, switch either on take the top one, the forward, uh, it's on the left main tank uh, quantity is low no and the right uh, main tank uh, quantity is low yes so the right fuel pumps forward and aft switches both off so the forward and the aft on the right side off inhibited checklist fuel pump right aft and right forward which is displayed on the ICAS and uh, fuel uh, balancing is uh, complete well, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait for that so we've got the ICAS and uh, cancel the ICAS so we have managed the first uh, issue now we, uh, we are balancing uh, the fuel and uh, as mentioned uh, previously, we're gonna have to look at the weight of the aircraft and to reduce the weight of the aircraft, we're gonna have to uh, jettison some fuel. So we'll uh, go back into the checklist and go to the non-normal menu and go to the fuel uh, section on the right hand side here. Cross feed, balance, jettison, click, then uh, fuel jettison. So fuel jettison condition, fuel jettison is uh, needed, fuel jettison arm switch armed, go to the other panel, armed, then uh, fuel to remain is uh, acceptable, no I want to give myself uh, more fuel, 14.1 is just on the max landing weight, I'll go for 15.1, so fuel to remain must be changed, yes, so we'll go to the overhead panel, and uh, pull and uh, increase the quantity to 15.1 uh, uh, that's set, uh, fuel to remain uh, selector pull on and set manually that's uh, done, fuel jettison uh, nozzle switches on both of them and uh, next page fuel jettison is complete uh, same as the fuel in balance checklist we have to wait of course for the jettison to uh, to take place so let's have a look outside the aircraft to see uh, the fuel uh, uh, being uh, jettisoned so you can see uh, uh, fuel uh, nozzles there and you can see the fuel uh, coming out of the aircraft against the blue uh, background of uh, the ocean so that's uh, all fairly good we're still uh, holding at uh, uh, ports and uh, now we can uh, have a look at uh, setting up the approach so if we go to the alternate uh, page a list of alternates there, uh, Melbourne, uh, Avalon if we go uh, divert to uh, Melbourne uh, you can see in the legs page it goes straight to uh, Melbourne airport and we lose all the navigation so we go to departure arrival instead uh, choose the LS Zulu uh, 1.6 ignore the insufficient fuel message because obviously we've got the whole plan to uh, our destination which was uh, Auckland 
so we uh, select from uh, ball uh, ndb and uh, set it after ports and uh, execute so we've got the hold at ports and then uh, the ILS from uh, the ball uh, ndb and uh, the rest of the approach so the weight we anticipate a weight of about 223 tons which would give us uh, VRF20 of uh, 155 uh, to fly uh, 160 we had the uh, minima set already on departure so we just have to uh, display it and uh, for the auto brake would go auto brake too it's a long runway and uh, 223 tons shouldn't be a problem for uh, the landing distance so we are all uh, set all we need to do now is uh, to finish uh, the uh, fuel imbalance or should I say reduce the fuel imbalance and uh, complete the jettisoning as well we are obviously uh, still uh, holding at uh, ports uh, we are working on uh, balancing the fuel and uh, jettisoning the fuel so uh, obviously at uh, this stage is a bit of a waiting game uh, because it's uh, gonna take a while to uh, jettison all that uh, fuel uh, the balancing is doing well uh, if we look at the uh, ICAS display 27.8 tons 27.7 now we need to bring it back to 15.1 so it's gonna take a while so I'll uh, stop uh, the video and come back once uh, the jettison and the balancing of the uh, fuel is done Uh, we are back now in the aircraft uh, we've been holding for a while but uh, the jettison uh, has gone well we are now down to a uh, 16.3 and uh, next time round the hold we should be able to start the approach now uh, we've uh, managed to uh, bring the fuel uh, quantity uh, to an acceptable level and uh, the fuel balancing as well is uh, doing uh, fairly well well uh, almost there so it's uh, all good actually we can uh, go uh, heading select and uh, ATC now uh, vectors us for uh, the ILS approach runway uh, 16 the fuel indication is now flashing so that means the fuel is balanced which is uh, good news and uh, the fuel quantity is also coming back towards 15.1 uh, so we managed uh, both uh, uh, problems and uh, we are now ready for the approach so what we'll do is uh, go back to the checklist and uh, first uh, do the fuel jettisoning so when the fuel uh, jettisoning is complete which is the case now so yes uh, fuel uh, jettison nozzle valve switches off so both uh, switches off and the fuel jettison arm switch off as well here we are that's the fuel jettison checklist complete so no more jettisoning of fuel as we reach the desired value uh, we now have 15.1 uh, uh, we said we needed 14.1 uh, 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 to uh, bring the uh, aircraft back to a uh, max landing weight so uh, this is not a problem because we are going to fly uh, the whole uh, downwind and uh, ILS approach runway 1.6 so we'll burn uh, definitely uh, more than one ton so as we are now under radar vectors we'll uh, give ourselves uh, an intercept course uh, to uh, ball ndb so 160 and execute and the fmc is now set up for uh, the ILS approach so still in the right turn to uh, join uh, right uh, downwind uh, runway uh, 16 and uh, still over the water uh, just uh, getting close now to the coastline and uh, flying as I said uh, right downwind well just heading 320 degrees now and uh, after that we're pretty much uh, all set all we need to do is uh, close the fuel uh, imbalance checklist once we are happy uh, the fuel is balanced 
at the moment we are developing a slight imbalance on the other side on the left side which is good in a sense because uh, as soon as we uh, stop the fuel balancing process then the fuel imbalance will uh, recreate itself so the uh, fuel quantity will come down on the right hand side uh, again so if we have initially uh, less fuel on the left hand side then uh, it's good because uh, as soon as we uh, start uh, using all the fuel from the right then the level will uh, equalize so it's uh, it's good so at the stage I'll uh, pause the video and uh, we'll come back uh, once uh, uh, we are happy with the uh, fuel uh, imbalance checklist And we are back now and uh, we'll have a look at the fuel imbalance uh, checklist. So open the checklist, fuel imbalance, uh, scroll down the pages and uh, read uh, fuel balancing is complete, yes, and fuel pumps forward and aft switches on. So we'll switch them on. Here we are. Then uh, both fuel crossfeed switches off. Off. The second one was already off. That's the fuel uh, imbalance checklist complete. So that's uh, one problem sorted out. And uh, now we'll go back to the normal checklist. So decent checklist. Uh, recall is uh, checked. The notes. We'll have a look at the notes. Basically flap 20, VRF 20 and go around flap 5. The notes are checked, auto brake 2, landing data and uh, approach briefings complete, decent checklist complete and approach, altimeters set, so uh, the approach checklist is complete. So we're now on the heading of uh, 335, uh, just uh, a beam uh, the airport and uh, we'll uh, probably turn uh, in the next uh, I would say uh, 15 miles uh, for right base uh, runway uh, 16. So to make the video a bit shorter, I'll uh, pause the video once again and uh, come back once we are established on the uh, ILS. Here we are back uh, established on the ILS uh, with the gear down, flaps uh, 20, displaying the checklist and uh, the landing checklist is now complete we have our missed approach altitude set 4000 feet and uh, flying uh, VRF uh, 20 plus uh, 5 uh, 160 uh, knots 2, checked so as you can see uh, we are flying with the autopilot still of course uh, localizer Light slope captured, and uh, the rate of descent is uh, slightly uh, higher than uh, usual, obviously, because we are flying at uh, 160 knots, and uh, this is not a problem. However, uh, we might get uh, uh, some uh, RAS alerts like uh, unstable, unstable, or uh, flaps. So, we'll see uh, what happens, but. Uh, it's not an issue, we can uh, disregard these uh, warnings as uh, it's just part of the RAS settings I have in the simulator and uh, we know the uh, aircraft is now uh, fully configured and uh, uh, flying at the correct speed so we are slowly uh, getting close to the 4 mile uh, checkpoint and uh, still with the autopilot engaged I'll uh, disconnect the autopilot at uh, some point during the approach and uh, as I said you'll get to hear the RAS alert uh, flaps flaps and uh, unstable so reaching uh, 4 miles uh, on profile which is good and now we have uh, LAN 3 rollout flare armed so uh, should we uh, wish to uh, do a uh, auto land 
then we can do an auto land as well uh, with uh, one engine flap uh, 20 that's uh, it's not a problem however as I said we're gonna fly the approach uh, manually uh, very soon the runway is uh, getting uh, closer and bigger good uh, puppy indication as well you can see the top of the white band on the uh, Altimeter slowly coming up. So the missed approach altitude is set 4,000 feet, and if we have to go around, there will be a go around flaps five. Flight director uh, flying manually now. The aircraft uh, flies uh, quite well on uh, one engine with the tech uh, operative. Uh, it's just a little bit more wobbly, but uh, overall it's, uh, it's not too bad. So following the flight director for guidance and also uh, looking out. Got uh, two whites, two reds on profile. The LS indication looks good as well. Adjusting uh, the center line. Check. Minimums. Landing. So hoping to uh, cross the threshold at uh, 50 feet. 50, 40, and uh, flare. Touchdown, all good. I pull the reverser on the uh, operative uh, engine. Here we are, we are already braking, decelerating uh, quite nicely. Not gonna need uh, much of the runway actually, as I said, the auto brake 2 is more than enough. It's a long runway. And uh, here we are, back to uh, Melbourne runway uh, 1 6. So it took us about uh, 40 minutes to do the whole sequence and uh, we are now back to uh, Melbourne uh, safely so vacating on the left and uh, yeah I hope you found the video uh, somehow uh, interesting and uh, useful it's just an example of uh, what's involved uh, in case of uh, an engine failure after takeoff uh, basically uh, first uh, is to control the failure climb straight ahead to a safe uh, altitude and uh, then uh, navigate to uh, a suitable area possibly a uh, hole there uh, do the uh, non-normal checklist uh, review the ICAS and then uh, do the after takeoff checklist after a while once we uh, assess the problem then uh, we can go back into the uh, ECL the electronic checklist to manage the situation uh, back to a suitable airport as uh, the uh, Boeing 777 is a long haul aircraft uh, very often will be uh, over the max landing weight so uh, some uh, uh, fuel jettisoning will be uh, involved to reduce the aircraft weight to a, uh, to a reasonable uh, landing weight otherwise if time is a uh, bit of the essence then we can come back for an overweight uh, landing which, uh, which is a possibility as well uh, what well we uh, have to uh, decide as well is uh, where we want to go, uh, depending on uh, on uh, several uh, requirements and uh, also the the weather and uh, various facilities we have uh, at airports. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, give me a thumbs up, share the video, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's very important. In the meantime, uh, thank you uh, once again for the interest in the channel and. Uh, I will uh, see you soon.